So what if I told you that when today's children are old, they will live in a world where one third of the global population has to migrate to another country or even to another continent because it has become too hot where they are living. Welcome, I'm Simon Vogts. And I am Marina Tavares. What sounds like a dystopia is nothing else than a sober and quite compelling prediction for the future unless mitigation policies are stepped up at an unprecedented scale. So what's the situation today? Already today, we see the consequences of climate change. Think about this year's flooding in East Africa or about the wildfires in California. We also see global warming in the data. Since the 1980s, every decade has been warmer than the previous one. The last five years are the hottest on record. 2019 is the second hottest year we've ever recorded. We also observe that sea levels are rising and they're rising at an accelerating pace. There is also mounting evidence that we are much closer to tipping points than we thought we are. So what can we expect for the future? Of course, it's difficult to precisely predict future global warming. The IPCC, the International Panel for Climate Change, estimates that unless strong policy action are taken very soon, by the end of the century, average mean global temperatures are likely to have gone up by something close to four or five degrees Celsius. Now the damage that that will cause is of course difficult to predict exactly, but it's beyond any doubt that there is a very high chance of catastrophic outcomes. Natural disasters will be more devastating and more frequent. These include not only typhoons and hurricanes, but also multi-annual droughts and the flooding of coastal areas. We also expect productivity to decline. Now, given those tremendous risks, what is being done about it? And here, the short answer is way too little. In 2015, the world came together in Paris and agreed on the need to limit global warming by the end of the century to something close to 1.5 degrees Celsius. However, today, five years later, we are way off track to even limiting it to two degrees. The United Nations estimates that even if all countries lived up to the pledges that they made in the context of the Paris Agreement, emissions in 10 years from now will be almost 40% too high for reaching the 1.5 degree target. To make matters even worse, for many countries, it's already clear that the pledges are likely to be broken in the first place. We advocate for a package that comprise a short-run green investment push to prompt the recovery from the current recession and a tar carbon tax aimed at sustaining a long-term transformation. The green stimulus includes subsidies to R&D and renewable energy production. It also includes investment in public infrastructure, investment in clean public transportation, smart energy grids, and retrofitting of buildings to make them more efficient. However, subsidies alone cannot generate the transformation that we need. And that's why the package advocated for our pre-announcing and the rising carbon tax. This carbon tax is gonna change the relative prices of high carbon energy to low carbon energy, which is gonna generate a sustainable reallocation in employment, innovation, and investment in the direction of a low carbon economy. Reallocations are costly, but we need to devote resources to win this fight. Our analysis shows that they are actually moderate. In 2050, the package will cost the global economy 1% of global output relative to business as usual. And by the end of the century, the benefits are gonna just swamp the cost. To be precisely, it estimates that incomes are going to raise it by 25% of global output by the end of the century. However, this moderate costs mask differences across countries and households. 
countries that have already invested in renewable energy are more likely to suffer a very small cost or even benefit from the transition, while countries that is still rely on fossil fuel and they're facing a rapid population growth are likely to burn a higher cost. However, they're also likely to enjoy the benefits of clean air pollution and the consequence the improvements in health and the life expectancy. The good news is that the revenues generated by the carbon tax are more than enough to neutralize the impact in the poor. The current crisis of global warming is unique because it requires joint action and coordination globally. If only advanced economies implement mitigation policies, temperatures and climate change will continue. And that's why we make this call to everyone to realize the urgency of actions that are needed.